qui a Venezia al 31 congresso europeo dell'obesità, tra i tanti studi uno spiccava sugli altri, si tratta di nuove analisi dello studio Select che ha valutato l'efficacia di semaglutide al dosaggio anti-obesità, quindi 2,4 mg per quanto concerne la perdita di peso e l'efficacia nella riduzione degli eventi cardiovascolari. Nel corso di una conferenza stampa abbiamo parlato con la professoressa Donna Ryan per farci spiegare il dato relativo alla perdita di peso. Jana, which is the main message of the select study from the weight loss point of view, not the cardiovascular one, but the weight loss just? I think physicians want to know what is the effect of using semaglutide long term. So the most important thing is that we show that using semaglutide for four years was safe and effective. Long term data. The other big message is that a whole diverse group of patients from around the world, everybody benefited. Older patients, younger patients, men, women, those who had prediabetes, those who didn't, those who were larger at the study start, those that were smaller, everybody lost weight. Which were the dosage of the drug for these four years of study? So patients were prescribed semaglutide and we tried to get the dose up to 2.4 milligrams, which is the recommended dose for obesity. However, we didn't push the drug dosage as hard as we do in our weight loss studies. So we allowed patients to be on reduced doses, to stop, to pause treatment. Um, you know, so those, there's less drug exposure in this population there, than there is in a usual weight loss population. It really mimics more what happens in the real world, where the doctors are going to titrate the dose according to how the patient's side effects are. Uh, Donna, you presented two sets of data, the first on treatment and the in-trial data. Which is the difference and which are the main results? So an in-trial analysis includes everybody. When we look at the average weight loss, whether they're taking the drug or not. If you're assigned to the drug treatment, you're in that pool and we're determining the average. So of course, some patients are not tolerating the drug or they're on a treatment pause for whatever reason. And so there was the, the in-trial is always less than patients who are actually taking the drug. And that's what the on-treatment analysis does. So it answers two different kinds of questions. So a, a first on-treatment on analysis uh, answers the question, how much weight loss will my patient use if they're taking the medication? And the other in trial analysis says, well, if I prescribe this to 100 people, what is the average weight loss going to be whether they take the drug or not? Which are the main results, the name figures to, to remember? So in this study, we saw slightly less weight loss than we usually see when semaglutide is given in weight loss studies um, in individuals with obesity without diabetes. So on average, we usually see in our weight loss studies about 15% weight loss on average. On our first on treatment analysis, it was about 11.5% weight loss, so slightly less. But remember, it's an older population. They may not have been on that full dose. And it's, it's a population where, where um, you know, no one was trying to lose weight. The, they were being given advice about how to reduce cardiovascular risk, how to live healthy lives. But no one was in the study to lose weight. So we would expect slightly lower weight loss. But still, clinically significant weight loss, enough to give a lot of health benefit. Another interesting data is the change in the BMI class. What have you seen? You know, we usually are, report our weight loss in terms of percentage weight loss from baseline. Sometimes we'll report kilograms of, base, of weight loss from baseline. We prefer percentage because it's a little more uh, generalizable than kilograms because people who have a higher weight are going to lose more kilograms because so they have more kilograms to lose. But I think we need to move to, to a, an analysis of treating to target. So what is our target? Is our target a percent? No, our target is better health. So one thing we did in this analysis is we looked at the people who were able to achieve at two years a normal BMI or a BMI that was not in the obesity category. And more than 55% of patients on semaglutide no longer qualified for that obesity category. And 12% actually normalized BMI. So that kind of target is meaningful in terms of, of, of how we would expect 
health to improve. There has been also a very good balance between efficacy and safety. In these four years of study, the drug has been very well tolerated. Yes, yeah, so uh, we're, the safety outcomes are very reassuring for physicians. And in this uh, paper, we analyzed whether uh, individuals who had lower body size or higher body size in different BMI categories, whether there were any safety differences, and there weren't. In, in general, individuals who were receiving semaglutide had fewer serious adverse events than those who were taking placebo. And that's because the drug was preventing cardiovascular events, and we also showed it, it prevented um, the, um, it prevented infections, COVID infections.